Today we're taking a look into the future of gaming. Okay. Earlier today, Jeff Keighley officially kicked off the 2022 Summer Game Fest with a two-hour show called Summer Game Fest. When I was looking over my notes at the list of games that were announced today, it wasn't the imagery so much that stuck out in my mind. It was these words, these specific phrases that are just still rattling around. So here they are. The six key phrases. Here they are. I don't love how... Here they are. I'm not, that's not who, that's not me. That's, I'm not that guy. So here they are, the six key phrases of Summer Game Fest. Let's face it, you're not getting everything today. As in, even if you don't get every announcement that you desire, let's face it, you're not gonna get everything today, but we've got a lot of great stuff. With Jeff Keighley. He's someone who is hyper aware of the audience and their expectations. And you can see him calculating that in that very moment. Like, imagine, imagine Ryan Seacrest saying, let's face it, this is not the best season of American Idol. Imagine, imagine, imagine Steve Harvey being like, let's face it, these two families don't seem that funny. I can't, but like a host, a host shouldn't, right? But Jeff Keighley is host, producer, and person who's into this stuff, who cares about these shows. And so... Sometimes a little bit of truth squeaks through there. And it turned out, yeah, Summer Game Fest 2022 was not, in fact, everything. We are back. We are bigger. As in. And on October 28th, we usher in a new era of Call of Duty with the launch of Modern Warfare 2. We are back. We are bigger. And we are bringing the entire team. Look at this ridiculous display of publisher wealth. I don't know, this might be, this might be like, well, Microsoft's buying us soon, might as well splurge a little bit. It's, it might be that. Activision, this is bygone. We don't do this anymore. <laughs> the way that they show, the way that they decided to, to demonstrate that they're back and they're bigger was, was, was renting out this freighter and, and painting it, lighting it all up for a 30 second clip. Insane to me. Absolutely insane. It should be noted though that after that, Modern Warfare 2 did have raw gameplay. Sorry, what's raw gameplay? You know, raw gameplay. As in, I am thrilled to get to show you the first raw gameplay. These were actually historically my favorite parts of E3's past. Just raw gameplay, if we must call it that. These moments where Everyone in this live audience, all of us are hanging on second by second to what's happening on the screen. Nobody in chat knows what's good. There's not that person who's like, they're going to love what the next. The next thing that happens is I know what happens next. I know what, nobody knows. Nobody knows what happens next. This is, we're just all live watching this video game being played. So Callisto Protocol kicked off with the raw gameplay. And then Modern Warfare 2, old school style, just to have just, you know, a live demo. And I'm thinking, wow, this is a trend already. This show is all about raw gameplay. And then it stopped. And then a lot of trailers. And then Cuphead Delicious Last Course showed up. I know you want you don't want people to necessarily have too much spoiled about the game, but you brought a little something. For people. A little something, yeah. Oh, sorry we didn't have a trailer. Here's Here's raw gameplay. We love this. This is a good thing. Thank you for this instead of another trailer. And I, and I feel like here I gotta make it clear again, I don't hate trailers, I love trailers. My favorite trailer of the day was Plucky Squire, which showed up in Devolver's show. And really, yeah, I think, I think the announcement of this works better as a trailer than raw gameplay. Quickly, we see this unique art style placed into a template we understand. Okay, cool, this is, you know, will always be on these pages of this book. Then, big twist. Then, quick shots that feed into your curiosity. Then, title, trailer, over. Good trailer. That's a good trailer. Probably one of the worst trailers I saw today was for Aliens Dark Descent. So I think context is important here. If this was the only Aliens game we had seen in the last 20 years, maybe this would mean more. Considering we just had a multiplayer Aliens game last year, this 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 feel this has no hype weight. This is it's a bunch of 
shit we've seen before, man. You can't you can't lean into that Wayland Technologies logo like it's a reveal anymore. But here's the thing, I understand. I understand sometimes a game's ready to be revealed but doesn't have gameplay ready to go. However, look at this, the last three seconds of this trailer. There you go, there, that was, that's your raw gameplay. It's almost like they're embarrassed by it. It's almost like they're ashamed. It's almost, it's almost like they felt that if they were to be in this Keeley production, they had to bring a cinematic style to trick us into being interested in the video game that just turns out to be this. Don't be ashamed. Okay. Uh, as in... What is a Stormgate, though? All right, so Stormgates are portals that open during a massive solar storm that unleash the infernal host on future Earth. Okay. Uh, to be clear here, I, I don't mean to disparage interviewer or interviewee. It's just a lot of times here, these people are trying to hit the bullet points that their marketing team thinks are important. It's like, it's like when Neil Druckmann offhandedly announced that there are 10 million sales of Last of Us 2. Um, and it's, it's just been kind of amazing. Like Last of Us Part 2 early this year passed a pretty big milestone. It sold over 10 million units. That didn't just pop into his head in that moment. It's more of this thing where you have to hit those bullet points. And sometimes I think those bullet points are not what's actually interesting about your game. One of the things that always bothers me is when a developer is debuting, announcing their game for the very first time. And the thing they start with, the very first thing they say is, Welcome to the world of Poonwabia. Our hero, Jajizas, is the last of her kind. The Niklexa Zarls. And it is the era of the big Zarnas. Like, who who in their right mind could pay attention to this who imagine being interested in what this person is babbling out imagine imagine leaning forward as they're explaining all this nonsense to you and yet, and yet they still do and yet, and yet it, it must work it, th there's a person who says this is how it should be done it's about your quick pitch it's about your quick you introduce your, introduce your game with a quick pitch with Stormgate, it's an RTS from former Blizzard employees. Jeff, for, to his credit, did say that first, right? That's the one bullet point. That's the only thing you need to drill into. But this game actually, all of that discussion, the, the, the interview afterward, was preceded by a three-minute trailer. That is also one of the worst trailers I saw today. Somehow the team behind this game constructed a, a three-minute trailer that has nothing interesting in it. Point to something that interests you. When I see something like this, I sincerely, I try to figure out, I try to imagine the intent. Why did they do this? What, what was their goal here? And in this case, my best guess is that it started off, the intent was, okay, we gotta show our setting. We have to show our, our heroes and our villains and we have to show off their abilities. And they just started working on the trailer right there without realizing that in a trailer, none of that's gonna stand out as anything unique. It's like, this is karaoke night and you got up and sang happy birthday. Four freaks, five freaks. As in... Hmm? Huh? Mm -mm. Huh? Oh, okay. That's all. That's from the neon white trailer for Freaks by Freaks. I think that is such a healthy, positive self-impression for a video game to have. For Freaks by Freaks. Look, if you're not into this, bro, no hard feelings. I love that for neon white. But I also, I kind of get that vibe from most of the video games I saw today. Most video games I saw today are for Freaks by Freaks. It's like, it's like sometimes I feel guilty for immediately dismissing a video game. And this kind of attitude is like, man, don't worry about it. We know who our audience is and you're not in it. That's cool. Thank you for understanding. That's what a relief for all of us. I wonder at the same time, what my own, like what, what is delayed input? 
Are you freaks? And finally, big drink energy. As in... La Roca in Spanish, uh, Uncle Handsome, sexiest man alive, uh, big drink energy. Always room for a cheesy joke. Can't stop thinking about this one. And not in a way that's like, what? what is Dwayne Johnson doing at Summer Game Fest? Because I... Honestly, I think I think Summer Game Fest did a good job of separating the parts that pay the bills from the parts you might be genuinely interested in. There was a semi-clear separation of those two things. This was clearly a part that pays the bills. So it is really, for me, just those three words that I'm so stuck on. Big drink energy. Which is, of course, a play on big dick energy. A pre-COVID joke. They sound similar. That's the humor of it. This is one of the biggest actors on this planet. Here, shirtless, in his home gym, dribbling out a weak dick joke, and also pretending he never planned on saying it in the first place. But there is a pause. There's a pause where it's like, oops, did I just say that? But also, laugh i presume you're laughing right now because here's the weird thing about this world we share there's probably like 50 million instagram followers who absolutely think that's a hilarious good joke they would in fact laugh why wouldn't he pause there why wouldn't he continue on as he does for them because they love that shit. we are powerless against it right you, you, you what do you like summer games fest can't write back to wb they can't be like hey do you think maybe we could get a take where Dwayne just talks for maybe just just 20 seconds he's not gonna do a reshoot there's that was your one take that's the one and we are powerless against it all of us all of us are he knows we know they know there's nothing that could be done. All of us are forced into big drink energy and it's not even a big drink. It's a small drink. That is delayed input for this week. Next week's episode will be about this weekend's Xbox showcase, which I hope has raw gameplay. Trailers that aren't boring. Things like that. I did hear rumblings that they might talk about Game Pass, so could be a big show. We'll cover it next week. Until then, thanks for watching. Welcome to the world of Poonwabia. Our hero... Jaji Nar is the last of her kind of the bub. Welcome to the world of Poonwabia. Our hero, Jija Rocks, is the last of her kind of the Teen Beebles. Welcome to the world of Poonwabia. Our hero Jaji Zaz is the last of her kind in the, t in the era of the Zarnas. Welcome to the world of Poonwabia. Our hero Jaji Zaz is the last of the Neglexa Trials.